Hi, I've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Monday, July 30th. This is the not last day of the month, second to last day of the month. And uh, here in the Atlantic, we've still noticed that things are fairly quiet, have been this way all month, haven't really had a chance for tropical development yet, and uh, that was basically expected as uh, years like this where we have the El Nino coming on, June can sometimes be active as we had, but then July often shuts down and sometimes it takes until the middle part of August before we get any more activity in seasons like this, and indeed it's been quiet this year so far uh, during the last 30 days or so. Uh, but we're now seeing some of these tropical waves coming off Africa starting to come westward we're getting closer to that Cape Verde season where these waves uh, start becoming strong enough where they can start trying to develop. We have one strong wave moving through the islands bringing thunderstorms and uh, rainfall today. Uh, this is moving uh, west-northwest towards the Caribbean islands and will likely be dying pretty quickly here as it encounters these really strong trade winds that you can see coming out of the east uh, that will probably tear this wave apart and uh, nothing much will probably come of this though some showers will probably propagate west-northwest in this general direction direction uh, for some time and may bring some rain there. Uh, but now we're watching an area of low pressure, not a tropical wave, but an area of low pressure embedded in the intertropical convergence zone still in this central Atlantic. And this is going to be moving slowly westward or west-northwestward with time here towards the islands over the next week or so. And uh, it's interesting, this usually happens when you have a really broad inverted V wave structure in the central Atlantic like this. Often these lows try to form along the eastern tail and uh, Often it's these that try to develop at the expense of the larger wave ahead of it, uh, which generally doesn't develop because of the broad structure. Uh, but this here is a forecasted by some of the models to try to develop at least the GFS, the UK Met, and the Canadian at one point or another have had this developing at some point in time, though every model has been inconsistent in showing so, uh, and uh, the track of this is affected by how quickly it tries to ramp up. Right now it's pretty broad, not a lot of thunderstorm activity here, and as long as it's embedded in the intertropical convergence zone, nothing much is going to come of it. It needs to gain some latitude here and acquire a circulation of its own independent from the this large trough before it can start trying to develop. But it's now been tagged in invest, and we can see the model plume here from this. Notice the general west-northwest movement towards the central Antilles uh, during the next five days or so. You can see the GFS ensembles in the long range take it all the way out into the corridor between the eastern seaboard and Bermuda. And uh, most of the models here are spread between the eastern Caribbean or slightly north of. And uh, this is going to be affected again by how quickly this tries to ramp up. The faster it strengthens, the more latitude it will gain as it approaches the islands here. And this will become crucial uh, because if it spends any quality time at all in the Caribbean, it's going to suffer the same fate as the wave ahead of it, which you're going to see will quickly die here as soon as it hits these strong trade winds that are moving through the Caribbean. They're a death trap for any kind of tropical wave or low pressure area that tries to enter the Eastern Caribbean, especially during El Nino years when the pressures over here are low and these trade winds are especially strong as they are this year compared to the last couple years. So if this gets into the Caribbean, you can say bye-bye to it. Uh, but if it can gain enough latitude to quickly cut north of the Caribbean, it will find itself in a slightly more favorable environment over here, and we could, could get some more significant development out of it. And now here's the European Ensemble mean uh, sea level pressure uh, 72 hours out. You can kind of see the wave signature showing up here. Uh, not particularly strong, even on the operational run. The uh, European has been the least aggressive in trying to develop this, and until we get the European on board, it's hard to jump on the bandwagon of getting this to develop. But if we look at what's going on here, uh, this is uh, 72 hours, but notice what happens if we go to day five, you see the wave signature is approaching the islands. Now, there's not much difference between these images, but if you watch, for, we're looking at the Bermuda High up here in the Western Atlantic. Let me get this thing away from my mouse. Uh, this Bermuda High in the Western Atlantic, and to notice the pressure gradient, we have a decent trade wind clip uh, north of the Caribbean here, and we have the wave coming towards this. Now if we go to day five, the pressure gradient increases between the Bermuda High and the low pressure near northern South America because the wave is approaching this area where the pressures are lower because of the El Nino and the trade winds start increasing in here. As soon as it approaches the islands, this pressure gradient increases. This does not allow as much surface convergence and makes it much harder for a circulation to develop. It's interesting uh, because if we look at the GFDL, which is now running on this invest, notice by 72 hours, it 
it actually has a decent looking storm here, tropical storm strength, moderate intensity out over the central Atlantic. But watch what happens uh, by day five. Look at how much weaker this looks. And here it is approaching the Antilles. And this is interesting because the GFDL and the HWRF generally strengthen any system that they can feed back in the deep tropics as far as it can take it unless uh, the conditions aloft are very poor. Now right now, the upper level conditions are pretty decent with upper level ridging here. And they're not going to be that bad as it approaches the islands here. So something else is showing up on the model making it show weaker systems approaches the islands and I believe it's this increasing pressure gradient that quickly swallows up uh, any kind of uh, tropical wave or circulation that tries to develop uh, near the eastern Caribbean even on approach to the islands here the HWRF which I didn't put on here also shows a slight weakening trend as the storm approaches the islands uh, and so this may may not be as favorable of a situation for this tropical uh, depression tropical disturbance as we might think. The other thing that's going against it right now is there's still a lot of sinking air over the Atlantic uh, indicated by these brown contours here. The green ones indicate upward motion. Uh, the MJO is still over in the western Pacific where we have a massive uh, typhoon. Uh, I forget its name. SAO something. It starts with those three letters. I don't remember right now. It's too early in the morning. But there's a massive typhoon over here by the Philippines. We'll be moving into China, and you can see the massive glob of upward motion there as all the convection goes off. Uh, the other pulse is in the eastern Pacific, and this is still on its way trying to move eastward. Right now, there's still a lot of suppression and sinking air in the way of this wave, and uh, you can see that by all the open areas that you can still see in the tropical Atlantic right now. Not a whole lot of convection going off, uh, so this will be f struggling and having a, a less than ideal environment to try to develop in. Uh, but if we look uh, at the GFS Ensemble 500 millibar day 8 here to see what may happen in the future of this, uh, if this tries to develop at all, it's probably going to try coming north of the Caribbean and end up being pulled into this mean trough that you can see on the GFS. And this is supported by the Canadian ensembles as well and the European. And this general pattern here of a strong ridge over the southwest increasing the drought conditions over the center part of the country and uh, the trough trying to get into New England is the general summer pattern that is favored in a year like this where we have the El Nino coming on uh, out of a La Nina. We have a negative PDO and a negative NAO, which in general favors this, getting the trough into the eastern part of the United States. And uh, years that were like this favored tracks coming out of the southeast Atlantic and uh, moving, recurving through the corridor between Bermuda and the eastern part of the United States here. Not much getting through the Caribbean because of the conditions I mentioned before, the trade winds making things unfavorable. So it's either tracks like this recurving in the western Atlantic or homegrown developments near the coast of the United States and the Bahamas. And that's the kind of year we're looking at. And so far, we've had all the developments close to home early on in the season. And now we're, we'll see if the Cape Verde season can get going and bring us some storms that may come out of here. There's not going to be a ton coming out of the deep tropics. They're mostly going to strengthen north of 20 north, but waves like this that we're watching now are going to be a concern once they get north of the Caribbean as uh, they will be in a more favorable region for development. And as we look ahead here, uh, the MJO is a uh, over here in the Pacific, as we mentioned before, but it's uh, forecasted to drift in general towards octants 8, 1, and 2, which imply upward motion in the Atlantic Basin and may increase the favorability right as we start moving towards mid-August and the period between August 15th and October 15th is the peak period of the hurricane season, so we may start to see some storms crank out uh, for the first time in over 30 to 40 days. So we will be watching this closely as the season starts to ramp up now, and we'll get the meat of whatever, whatever activity uh, this year will bring us. So overall, uh, not, a, not any major threats for development in the immediate future. Again, shower activity from this wave coming through the islands. They may get another shot of rain and uh, tropical storm-like conditions possible with this system as it comes towards the islands. If it doesn't develop quickly, it's going to have problems surviving in the future if it gets stuck in the Caribbean. But if it can develop fast enough to get north of the Caribbean, we may have to watch it down the road. Uh, implications for perhaps the... Northern Caribbean Islands, the Bahamas, possibly the eastern seaboard of the United States in the long range, but too far to speculate yet. This is probably about 48 hours from becoming anything significant if it does try to ramp up in this part of the Atlantic here over the next few days, so we will keep a close eye on this as time goes on. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.